Pues ya, ¿no? ¿Sí me escucho? ¿Estamos dormidos o apagados? ¿Sí me escucho? Campuseros, ¿cómo estamos? ¿Dónde está el ánimo de este que es tercer día ya, no? ¿Sí o no? Bueno, pues ahorita ya vamos a presentar a alguien una conferencia magistral. Es un, es un momento más telefónica exactamente, ya está más que listo, más que puesto. Sin él no hubiéramos podido conocer muchos términos geeks que nos, que nos encantan, ahorita como por ejemplo podcast, sin zapatos y toda la onda. Por favor, vamos a darle un muy fuerte aplauso, les ven Hammersley, aquí, desde el Campus Party 2010. Oh, dear me. Buenas tardes. Hola. <laughs> Hello, translators. Thank you very much. Ah, dear. Okay. Um, I'm very sorry. I'm going to speak in English this afternoon because I'm too stupid to speak in Spanish. But it's okay because I come, I come here with a story for you. Wow. This is a very big room, isn't it? I come here for a story. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. You won. You won. So here's the thing. Do you remember, you're all very old, right? You remember in school, there were two groups of people. There was the cool people, yeah? And there was the geeks. <laughs> was anybody here a cool person? Is anybody here a geek? <laughs> We won. The geeks won. The past 10 years, maybe 20, but the past 10 years, The geeks, us guys, we won. We control everything now. Look, look around you. Look at all of this. This is the cool people. We're the cool people now. Now the thing is, over the past 10 years, we've broken everything. We've broken music, the music industry. Do you remember that? We broke that. The film industry. Remember, there was that business before? It was kind of, yeah, we broke that too. Television, we broke that. Journalism, do you remember newspapers? They were cool. <laughs> we broke those, sorry. The travel industry, you know. Pretty much every industry that we went and touched the past 10 years, we broke it. And we made something better. Yeah? For the first time, this is really unusual. You know, this is, this is perhaps the first time in human history where so much has been broken and rebuilt without there being a war, without there being lots of people dying as well. The past 10 years, we've completely changed the world. And it wasn't the cool people doing it. It was the geeks. It was the camposeros. As you say, this is our revolution now. Usually, a revolution, you know, it involves people with guns and lots of people being killed and the doors being kicked down and things on fire and all of that. We don't do that. Well, at least not this week. <laughs> well, maybe tomorrow, I don't know. <laughs> you know, there are 6,000 geeks living in tents over there. I don't trust them myself. <laughs> But this is our revolution. We can do, we've been, for the past 10 years, we've been reinventing the world. Everything we've touched has changed completely. Now, why is this? What is it that makes the internet, what is it that makes digital or geeky things 
so revolutionary. Today, I'm going to talk about three ideas behind this. The three main reasons I think that we have won. The first one is freedom to communicate. The second one is feedback, getting ideas back. And the third one is the death of distance. Bear with me on these. We won, but the water is attacking me. What's going on? <laughs> we won, damn you. <laughs> so the internet, one of the first things that the internet gave us is the ability to communicate with each other. In English, there is a, I don't know if this translates into Spanish. I'm sure my lovely translator friends can translate this. There's a, a, a saying that says, the freedom of the press belongs only to those who own a press. <laughs> the thing the internet has given us is we all own a press now. You might, you're too young to remember, but there was a time before where if you wanted to tell the whole world something, you had to be very rich and own a newspaper. But now, all you need to own is a blog. And how much is a blog? Nothing. We can communicate with the whole of the rest of the world very easily and for no money. An idea that one person in this room has today can be talked about in San Francisco and London and Berlin and Tokyo and everywhere else on the planet in 20 minutes' time. As quickly as you can write your blog post and hit send. You can communicate with everybody you want to communicate with. This is something totally new for human society. It's not just a cool new thing. It's not like an iPad. You know, it's not a cool thing that's, that in three years' time will look old. This is a total change in human society. It's in, as important as the invention of the wheel or the invention of fire. The ability that you can have an idea in Mexico City now and somebody in Tokyo in five minutes' time can be telling you that you're an idiot <laughs> is a fundamental change to the, the way the world works. It's true. The second fundamental change is feedback. It's that the person in Tokyo can tell you you're an idiot. <laughs> this is a really important thing. Because on the internet, we can measure everything. Yes? Imagine, right, now imagine that you are a newspaper owner. You're very rich, you own a newspaper. You publish the newspaper every day and you put it out there and people read the newspaper. Do you know what they read? Do you know where they were when they read it? Do you know who they are? No. We know nothing. The internet, digital things, we have feedback. We have server logs. We have comments. We have data coming back at us. You put something out, you get data back. This is new, again. For the first time in human history, we can see what happens. We can put an idea out and we can follow it. We can watch it move. We can see who agrees with you. We can see who doesn't agree with you. You can see when people read it. All of these things. This changes the world in very many interesting ways. But the third thing, and the thing I'm going to talk about for the rest of the half an hour, is the death of distance. Previously, if you wanted to have an idea, if you wanted to share an idea with your friend, if I wanted to talk to you, yeah? I would have to sit in a cafe with you and we would have to look at each other and we would have to talk, yeah? That would be lovely, but <laughs> it would be very difficult for me to get an idea to everybody in this room. It would be a lot of coffee and there isn't enough cafes in the world, you know, it's difficult. And we would have to be in the same city. If you have an idea in Mexico City and you want 
to get that idea to Copenhagen, say, then before the internet, you would have to get up, go to Copenhagen, find another cafe, sit down again, have another conversation. What the internet has given us is it means that we can transmit our ideas and our money and our goods and our services and all of the things that we, we make and we like and we do. And it doesn't matter how far away people are. Physical distance doesn't matter. And this again is the first time in human history. Even 20 years ago, Physical distance mattered because a long-distance phone call was very expensive. Or you would have to drive there, and that would take time. It was, it was very difficult. Whereas now, you can be in Mexico City, you can talk to somebody in Tokyo, and it could be this, it's the same as if they're sitting next to you. This is a new thing. So this makes a new, new thing. And this is, my, this is a, the new subject that I'm starting to work in this year and next year and the year after and the year after. And you're really the first few people outside of, you know, mad people in a pub in London who I've told this about. So if I'm an idiot, right, <laughs> feedback. <laughs> this is how it works. It's good, isn't it? Yeah? Post-digital geopolitics. Now, yeah, translate that. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay, now think, what is a country? What defines a country? Borders. I'm going to tell you, you don't have to shout out. <laughs> you can if you like, I'll ignore you. Um, borders, for one thing. A country before, a thousand years ago, very simple. You draw a big line, if you're on this side of the line, Mexico. If you're on that side of the line, America. You know, a border. France, Spain. Just a line. And that was important because if you're sitting in Mexico City and you want to get an idea to America, then that's however many weeks by donkey, you know, that way. Well, that way. Which, I don't know. What, which way is it? That way. Right? The other thing that a country is, is it controls the groups inside that country. A local government controls the groups. If you want to hang out with people of the same ideas, then you're limited by the distance that you can travel, and you're limited by, the, by the, what is available where you are. So it's impossible. If you're living in a small village 50 years ago in Poland and you want to learn how to make Mexican food, you really can't because you're too far away from Mexico and there isn't anybody there to talk about, to talk to. There's no con you can't form a Mexican cooking group in Poland 50 years ago. That would be silly, right? The other thing, the third thing, is the control of the communications. Before the internet, the country, the government, would control the communications. They control the TV, they control the radio, they control who publishes things. We all understand this, yes? This is the old way of countries, yeah? This old power, this old idea of countries as power, is based on the monopolies that the old world gave us. And these monopolies, the ability to control borders, the ability to control communications, all of those things have been destroyed by the internet. Completely destroyed. Can the government control email? No, not really. Can the government censor the internet? They can try, but it doesn't work. Can the government stop you from joining a particular Facebook group? Probably not, no. <laughs> so what we've been doing over the past 10 years, the things that we've been inventing, you thought that they were just cool things on the internet? 
But actually what they've been doing is reinventing politics and reinventing the idea of the country, the idea of the nation state. So you're all sat there and you're going, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Who's this English dude with the silly mustache and the tattoos? What, who the fuck's he, right? You know? <laughs> what? What? Oh. Doesn't even speak Spanish. I mean, what? Cha. <laughs> so here's the thing. We've got big problems right now. Yeah? We have economic problems. We have all these different things. We have political problems. We have ecological problems. We have social problems. But all of those problems are being talked about, are being controlled by government, which is made up of old men in suits and ties, <laughs> who don't understand the new way of doing things. They don't understand that we can have a group of half a million people online tomorrow, like that. They don't understand that, it doesn't, that physical borders don't matter anymore. They don't understand that group forming, social media, all of these things, all of the things that you see everywhere in this room is the way the world is working now. We have all these big problems. And the thing is, is that it's soon going to be your problem. I know you don't think about it right now, but one day you're going to be as old as I am. I know, it's, it's a horrifying thought. It's terrible. <laughs> but at a certain point, you are going to be old enough to where all of these big problems are going to be your problems. Individually. Somebody in this room is going to be in charge of something very important. Possibly the person sat next to you. Maybe you. Shit. <laughs> so, the reason why I'm here today is to point out that the world has fundamentally changed. That the things that we have been doing for the past 10 years, the things that have meant that we can all be here in this room right now, the fact that everybody in this room is doing something which five years ago was fantasy. Everybody in this room, if you went back in time 15 years, and you told yourself what you do today, your younger self would have thought you were very high. <laughs> like, you do what? <laughs> yeah, mate, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the world in the past 10 years has changed completely, and it's changed because of you guys. So my challenge to you today is for the rest of the week, and for the rest of the summer, and for the rest of the year, and for the rest of your lives, to take what we're doing in this room today, to take what we do in Campus Party, to take what you do online, to take what you do with your computers, to take what you do with your iPads and your phones and all of these things, to take the skills and the ideas and the concepts that we've learned for the past 10 years of the internet and add them all together to, to make that new way of thinking. Because it's okay that, yes, we can tell the old guys in the suits what to do. But the thing is, they're going to be dead soon. <laughs> Sorry, old guys in suits. Sorry. <laughs> they're going to be dead soon. It's all going to be your problems. So your job is to take Campus Party as the first day of the real revolution. Today is the first day of the days where you take all of the things you know and you put them not into killing aliens in, in whatever game or, or collecting followers on Twitter or making your Facebook the biggest Facebook ever or playing Farmville all the time <laughs> or Angry Birds. Oh, Jesus. Uh -huh. 
to take those skills and apply them to the big job that we have, which is to save the world. I'm far too old, so it's your job. Thank you very much, and good luck. Uh-oh. Are we doing uh, questions? Yes, we're going to okay. have a round oh, okay. of questions, right. of course. It's only the it's only fair. way to do it. Yeah. Okay, este, cualquier persona que tenga una pregunta, le este, levanta la mano y le pasa el micrófono. Uh, hi, Ben. Hi. Uh, I'm George. Um, okay. Well, I've been thinking of all the stuff you have told to us, and I think that technology can uh, eliminate borders, can make you, can change my status of Mexican and yours as British, and can change us to be person, mm. people, just people. Yes. Uh, but I'm still afraid of the return of the seat, the Empire Strikes Back. How the old uh, establishment, uh, how can we defend us of the old establishment with things such as ACTA and all that um, mm. re retro ideas? What can we do? Well, there are two things. You've got a short-term thing and a long-term thing. The short-term answer is that the short-term answer is that um, we have to innovate our way out of these things. You know, we have to make new technologies which get around all of these problems. You know, the, the, there's the saying about the internet and censorship, you know, the internet treats censorship as, as damage and it just goes around it. We have to innovate our way out, which is why it's us in this room that's the important ones, because we're the ones who can do that. That's the first thing. You just have to be better than them. The second thing, and the thing that nobody thinks about right now, is that the old guys are going to die. Well, they will. I mean, just naturally, they're going to die. I mean, it's, it's not like, you know, we're going to go and kill them. <laughs> but, you know, they're kind of old guys, right? And eventually, they'll be gone. And eventually, it's going to be your problem. And that's, that's not in 50 years' time or 100 years' time. It's in 10 years' time. And so for those of you who are, want to do these things, you have to think, okay, if I'm going to be in charge in 10 years, maybe 20 years' time, what do I need to do today to start thinking about how we as a country or how we as a society or we as camposeros or we as geeks or we as, you know, whatever. Um, what do we have to do to prepare for when we're, when it's my problem? I think the, we spend, the technology world spends too much time thinking in six months or one year, you know, when's the next iPhone going to come out? Oh, next year. Oh, great. You know, when's the next iPad coming out? Oh, next year. You know, and we, don't th we can't think of te about technology past two or three years. That's silly. But we can think about the, s the, the effects on society. We don't know what the next iPad is going to look like. But what we can start to do is think about what it means when everybody has an iPad or everybody has a phone which has the internet on it. You know, these th the, have you seen these boxes up here on the scaffolding? Those, those, see those square boxes? That's the new 4G testing thing. You seen the guys over there who do it? That's a, a hundred meg. So, and th well, maybe, <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> but the thing is, is when I was first on the internet, or first online, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, my modem was 300 bits a second. Yeah? And, and 1,200 slash 75, that was incredibly fast. And then we went to 2,400 you know, 2, bits a second, you know, 0.02 meg, no, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0
whatever it was, you know, small, <laughs> right? Really, really slow. And now I have 20 megabytes to my house, and it's pff, whatever. We don't know what the, what, what the phone is going to look like in three years' time. But we do know it's going to do cool things. And we can, it's easy to say, in 20 years' time, everybody will have a, a thing in their pocket which gets them 100 meg or a gigabit. We can make that prediction. So we have to think now, not what do we do about these old guys right now, because yeah, fuck them, they'll be dead in 20 years. What we have to think about is what are we going to do when everybody has a gigabit connection to one of these? I mean, do you remember what phones were like 10 years ago? Yeah? They were kind of rubbish, right? <laughs> so think what this is going to look like in 10 years' time. We already know, like, from Moore's Law, that said, uh, you know Moore's Law? Yeah? Of course you do, you're geeks, right? Okay, so, it's <laughs> like a stupid question. <laughs> do you know about computers? <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about this thing? We call it the internet. <laughs> so these are, how much are these? These are like 400 pounds, I think, you know, or $600, yeah? 10,000 pesos, I don't, how much are they? Yeah, 10,000 pesos, okay. So in 10 years time, the same technology, if it halves every 18 months, so 500, 50, it's going to be basically 20 pesos. You know, they'll be giving these away for free with cornflakes, you know, uh, you know. <laughs> you know, you'll be like, ah, oh, shit, another iPhone, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know. In 10 years, yeah? So let's not think about the d gadget. Let's just think about what happens when these are free with cornflakes. What does that do to the country? What does that do to the world? You know? So this is what we have to do. We have to start thinking about what is it we can build which might be slow and difficult now, but in 10 years' time, when you're running your cities or when you're CEOs of your companies or when you're professors at your universities or whether you're, you know, professional wrestlers, I don't know, whatever it is you want to do. <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> El Geek. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Just a big massive Genius. Um, <laughs> you know, whatever it is you're doing in 10 years' time, everything you can think of now will be possible. Everything you can think of. So we have to start thinking about what we're going to build to make sure that we don't lose the economy again or we don't lose the, the e ecology or we, we do something about so, so all of the social problems that we have in every country. Not just Mexico or America, but everybody. Everywhere has problems, of course. So. We can do something about it. And the thing is, is that the world is changing in a way which is only, which is technology driven, is internet driven. So the only people who can do something in that world are people who understand that world. Yes? You understand? You are those people. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but it's your problem now. <laughs> like, you're, you're the guys. You know the A-team? You know the A-team? The you know the B.A. Baracus? You know? Yeah? You know what I mean? Yeah? You're the A-team. <laughs> you're Batman. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> you know, you, it's your job to save the world now because you're the only people who understand the world now. I know that's really scary, but it's kind of true. Do we have any more questions? Man in the front here. Oh, oh, there's one over here with the microphone. Oh, sorry. Hello. Uh, do you hear me? Do you hear me? No, I can't. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> so it's n not really a question. It's more like a concern. Uh. And it is about the quality of the content in the internet. Uh, the the content the the that's right. Uh, not only the geek guys are the in, in the internet, but also the cool guys. And they are using the internet mostly to tell nonsense, to say silly things, to 
you know, to, to, to pick, say yeah, to, no, to say silly things. Oh, yeah. To uh, comment in something about some YouTube video or yeah. uh, something about stupid in, in Twitter. Uh, there are some people, you know, the, the, the guys are jump, jumping also on the internet, but they, they don't even know why. <laughs> and you're just, uh, oh, there is some noise out there. And yeah. So the quality of the content is my concern, and I don't see a good expectation in the future, in the n next ten years or five years. And I don't think that the in the email is gonna be uh, something more like spam or, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Okay, so this is, there are two things here. Um, it's very difficult for people in this room to understand what I'm about to say. There are also stupid people in the world. <laughs> it's true. You're right. There are also stupid people. Not here, but you know. Out there, out there, there are stupid people. We have to understand that. If you're designing something, if you're designing something for content, you have to design things into it which understand the fact that there are going to be people out there who are a little bit stupid. <laughs> if you're social media people, if you're designing a social media something, then you already know you have to design moderation and, and user identities and you have to d design ways of banning people and design ways of, of, of having the community reinforce itself and all of that sort of thing. So in many ways, it's actually an engineering problem. Again, that the only people in the world who can solve that, like you guys, yes. But also, the other thing is, is it kind of doesn't matter. You know, you can be serious about one thing all the time, but you can also be stupid about other things at the same time. You know, I... I I have, you know, very serious political conversations with very important people, and then I also go and I like to watch Shakira videos, you know? <laughs> She's very bendy. It's good. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, one thing doesn't take away from the other. I mean, if you could put them together, that would be amazing. <laughs> you know. uh, hips don't lie. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. So, you know, I think we can just, I think we can relax about the fact that there are some stupid people out there because we have, we're too busy. We've got, we've got jobs to do. We just, you know, if they want to talk about Britney Spears and, you know, which person from TV has got, you know, fat or thin or whatever, you know, or they want to talk about Shakira, <laughs> you know, uh, Shakira, Shakira, you know. <laughs> you want to talk about all that? If they want to do that, that's cool. That's cool. That's fine. If they want to do kitten pictures and, you know, all of those things. That's fine. They can do that. But meantime, we have to remember that we've got a job to do, that we have the world to save. It's all right. If they're busy watching kittens, that's, that's fine. It doesn't, uh, me watching Shakira videos doesn't take away from you having, com having important conversations about politics at all. I don't think, anyway. There was a... We have a, but, oh, sorry, uh, we, can we get the microphone over here in a minute? Yes, man in the, in the eh, awesome t-shirt. Uh, bueno, no, no hablo español, digo, no hablo inglés más bien. <laughs> Dude, me neither, man, seriously. <laughs> okay, come on. Eh, Ask me in Spanish and I will try and work it out what you're saying. Okay. Oh, oh, eh. oh. <laughs> oh. oh it's the translators. Mi pregunta es, eh, va referida como a, esta, a este punto que toca sobre la distancia, la muerte de las distancias Y bueno, yo lo, yo lo que quiero saber es, eh, ¿cuál es tu visión acerca de si la muerte de estas distancias en realidad eh, se vuelve también una saturación de las individualidades de todos los demás sobre nosotros mismos? O sea, ¿qué hay de todas estas personas que... Eh, con todas estas aplicaciones, Foursquare, eh, YouTube, MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, si esta, esta, este, esta ruptura, esta muerte de las distancias eh, no perjudica o más bien no, no eh, recae en una saturación de la individualidad de los demás sobre nuestra persona. Ok. 
Thank you. Right. Um, See. Si. <laughs> um, okay. I, I agree with you. It's a, it is a, um, it's a problem, but it's only a problem now. I think what we have to understand is that there is a, uh, a, 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 a lag. There is a time difference between a new technology arriving and society understanding that new technology. Not, I don't mean understanding it in terms of how it works, but understanding it in terms of um, etiquette, in terms of manners, in terms of what is polite. Yeah? So uh, think of the mobile phone. Okay? It took maybe 20 years for society to understand what is polite in a restaurant with a mobile phone, or in the theater, or in the cinema. About 20 years. Maybe 10, 20 years. And then smartphones came along, and people got Twitter on this. And now, again, you go into a restaurant, and people are like this. <laughs> you know, you see people having dinner with their heads, just like, <laughs> yeah? Because we, as, a, as people, we haven't yet understood how to deal with new technologies, not how to use them, but how, when to use them. You know, when is good, when is bad, these things. Because it's still really young. You know, Twitter's four or five years old. Foursquare is two years old. You know, f Facebook is only six, five, six years old. YouTube is only six years old. You know, it's still very young. And so there are some things which we have to still um, just accept that society ha hasn't yet understood what to do. You know? And eventually, it'll, it'll catch up. Uh, a, an example is, is, is cameras, digital cameras. I don't know what it was like in Mexico, but, but seven, eight years ago, when Flickr started in, you know, when Flickr started, Flickr started everywhere. When Flickr started, <laughs> that's a silly question. When Flickr started, uh, you couldn't go to a party without people taking pictures, you know, and putting the pictures onto Flickr, or putting pictures onto Facebook. You know, and you come home from a party the, the next morning and there'll be lots of pictures of you really drunk, you know, with your name next to it, yeah? Because, you know, people did that. And then over the past few years, we now understand that's not cool. <laughs> yeah? If you go to a party now and you see somebody taking your picture and they start posting it to Facebook, they don't go to parties anymore. Yeah, they're not your friends anymore. It's like, you bastard, what are you doing? You know, I was drunk, stop it. <laughs> untag, untag. <laughs> and I think the same thing with Facebook, with Facebook or Foursquare or all of these things. It's something that we have to learn how to handle now. And, and you see this now with Facebook, that people, young people are now understanding about privacy on Facebook. We, we, we start thinking about privacy, all those things. We just have to, we, it needs time. But yes, if, if everything stayed the same as it is today, we'd be screwed. But it's not going to stay the same. Oh, we'll eventually get around this. Yes. Okay. You, said, you said that government can uh, control the information on the Internet. But my question is, what do you think about what happened to Google in China? And... Because government had also geeks on their side, yeah. working for them. We need better geeks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an arms race, right? You know, is, is anybody here? Anybody is anybody here evil? Okay, a few people. Yeah. Fine. Okay, that guy there, watch him, right? But everybody else, is, is anybody here good? We good? Yeah. Okay, so there's lots of us, there's one of you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, we just need to get better geeks, I think, in many ways. But also, there are very few 
censorship things that there isn't somebody here who could tell you how to get around it. You know, does anybody here know how to use BitTorrent? No, never heard of it. There's <laughs> never heard of it. No, we don't do that. Uh, does anybody know how to use Tor, for example? You know, or, yeah, you know, there are lots of, who knows how to get around proxies? And, yeah, you know, <laughs> there are people here who can help you. <laughs> Not him. <laughs> He's evil. <laughs> But everybody else, yeah. You know, we, so I believe in these guys. I believe in the good guys. And there are lots of good guys here. You know. So I think, where's the microphone gone now? Hey! <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hey. My name is Enrique, and it was a pleasure to hear your, your, your chat with us. And you are talking about to save the world, for example. Mm -hmm. But I'm, li I'm, I'm living here in Mexico. Uh, I think, of course, that we are uh, the Mexicans are going to save Mexico, I hope. But for example, in September, we are going to celebrate, according to the federal government, uh, 2,000 years of being a free country. And the half of the, uh, of the country hasn't the old technologies. I don't want to exaggerate it, but uh, water or, or the wheel. How can uh, uh, we, we have? Uh, well, I, there is uh, half of the of the country is, is very very poor on, yeah. and more. So we in Mexico we have uh, very tough uh, stuff in, in front of us. How, uh, I want to hear your uh, uh, opinion about uh, uh, how do you see this? Because you talk about revolution, mm. and we have two thousand years of revolution. And we are uh, we are in, in not uh, uh, we are not using these th things uh, in favor of us. Yes. Okay. So so you have two thousand years of Mexico and the, all of that. Yes. But we have three thousand days of the internet, or five thousand days of the internet. So uh, you, you're right. It's uh, right now. It's really difficult. There are many countries where, you know, there's a digital divide and the, you know. Technology isn't available for everybody. Of course, we have huge problems. But we've only been doing this for 5,000 days. We've only been doing it really for 500 weekends. You know? The internet's been big for, what, 10 years? So 500 weekends. It's not very long. <laughs> 500 weekends can't solve 2,000 years. 1,000 weekends, maybe you're getting closer. 2,000 weekends, which is nothing, really. You know, we'll, you'll be in power then. You know, you'll be president in 30 years. Maybe, I don't know. Um, we'll do really amazing things. Because what we've done in the first 5,000 days of the internet has changed everything. All we now have to do is just spread that change. Do you know William Gibson, the writer? Yeah? There's a, a William Gibson quote that everybody says at this point. There are lots of people nodding. You've heard this before, I'm sure. He says, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. Yeah? And our job now is really to do that distribution. But again, it's not the government's thing, because they can't, because they don't, they have no idea, no idea. It's some totally different world. So yes, in, in September, I'm sure there'll be a really big party. It's going to be an amazing party, yeah? <laughs> but once the, once the old guys have gone to bed, they've had too much tequila and they're a bit sleepy, you know, and <laughs> then the next morning, you guys... You have to go, right, what are we doing in the next 2,000 years? The last 2,000 years, that was, that was fun. But the next 2,000 years, that's going to be awesome. And you guys get to do that bit. Hi. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Hi, my name is Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. And um, I would be very much interested in listening to your uh, view coming from another part of the world, from a part of the world which is um, definitely more 
um, evolved or has had more development, especially in, in, in internet and communication technologies. And it has been a lot faster than in Mexico and Latin America. So what uh, would be your vision on, on the role that uh, communication and technology is playing in the development other areas in, in countries, education, health, government, yeah. uh, economy, and so on. So, okay, so here's the difference between the, the development that we have now, technology development, and old development. Think about horses, or swords. Swords, swords are a good way. So, so you know swords? Yeah? So swords started off being really big and heavy, and uh, they were sort of badly made and really bad. And then they got better and better and better and better and better because people learned how to do it. And then you got the best sword possible, right? There was maybe the Toledo ones and your, the samurai ones in Japan, right? That was it. And then that was the best ever swords. And the reason that it stopped, that swords stopped getting better was because you don't use a sword to make another sword. But technology is the first thing that we've ever had in human society where you use technology to make better technology. Yeah? Horses started off rubbish, got really good, you know, got much better horse, much better horse, much better horse, really nice horse. Nah, you can't make, any, you can't make better horses. You, you know, but communications technology makes better communications technology. And so what we have now is a situation where because of feedback and because of communication and because of all of that and group forming, the, 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 the speed that we can get better at everything else it gets faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. So I mean, I, I, I disagree with, with the idea that, 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 say, Britain is better at the Internet than Mexico. We may have had three years head start, maybe. But, like I say, it's only been 5,000 days. So, you know, you've got plenty of time to catch up. And certainly, in Latin America is doing amazing things that nobody else is doing. You know, we're doing really, you know, you guys are doing cool stuff that nobody else has seen. It's just different. So, so I wouldn't feel like, you know, bad or anything. But what's happening is that the tools that we're using here, the open source stuff, the communication, you know, the modding, even the gaming, everything that we do here will feed into everything else. We'll make education better. We'll make medicine better. We'll make financial things better. We'll make democracy better. We'll make all everything else better. And then when, you, when that gets better, then the technology gets better, and it all goes up and up and up and up and up. So what's happened in the past few years is we've stopped making swords, which has a natural limit, and we've started making technology which makes better technology itself. All of you guys learned how to make new stuff on old stuff. Yeah? And that new stuff will help you make even cooler new stuff. And that cool new stuff will make even cooler new stuff. And Campus Party 2015, when we're all back here again, all older and bigger mustaches and everything, <laughs> we will have amazingly cool stuff because of the things that you're making today. So I think that's the difference now, is that previously you couldn't get better because there was nowhere to go. Whereas now you have technologies which the natural effect of that technology is to get better and better and better. Okay, so this is going to be the last question, and maybe you can... Oh, it's on the phone. Yes, I've got Paco on the phone. Oh, hello, he's Paco. watching you via Campus TV. Hi, Paco on Campus TV. And he's got a question for you. Okay. Dime, Paco. This is technology working. <laughs> It, he says that there's a very technical question. Mm -hmm. And it's, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Who do you think is going to win the game this evening? 
Oh. Mexico the Spain, or Mexico Spain. Game. Yeah. Okay, so I'm in a room with 6,000 Mexicans. <laughs> yeah? And, and, and one and Spanish on the phone. And a Spaniard on the phone, and you're Spanish as well, Anna. You're like, okay. <laughs> I think the winner yeah. of the game will be the octopus. <laughs> Very good one. Very good one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico, 2-0. <two> <laughs> okay. okay, so the last question here, and maybe okay. a really quick answer, please. So, so what? Me. Oh. <laughs> I tried to find a good example of a geek president, but I, 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 president. Di I didn't find any. Would you think uh, politics is a, is a field geeks should be breaking right now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> or what is more geeky? Or they should Can you think of anything <laughs> more geeky than running a country? <laughs> it's, it's like playing World of Warcraft, only really big. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> the only problem, right, if you think about it, the only problem politics has is the user interface is shit. <laughs> right? But if you made a better user interface for politics, we, we'd be amazing at it. It needs to be mouse and keyboard, right? <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, seriously, yes, I think we should. I think everybody here should be in politics. Because, like I said before, it's only people like the Campo you know, like us, that understand how the world is changing. Because we're making it change. It's all our fault. Sorry. You know, we broke it. <laughs> so we have to go into politics. And, and quite seriously, you know, most politics is kind of geeky. It's numbers and, and moving things. It's, it's playing Civ Four you know, World of Warcraft or something like that. You know, it's just a really big MMO with a bad interface and a very laggy connection. <laughs> the graphics are awesome. <laughs> but the rest of it is sucks. But, you know, we can, we can fix the user interface. We're good at user interfaces, you know. Don't use Flash, but, you, you know. <laughs> right? So, you know, it's a, I can't use the country itself. Oh, fucking... But <laughs> you know, but we can do it. The first person to be to be president of Mexico through an iPhone app, you know, I'll shake them by the hand. That's. But we, geekiness is the only thing that's going to save us now. We tried everything else. Right? We tried everything else. Religion didn't work out very well. That was kind of sucky, right? <laughs> you know, you know, left wing, right wing politics, they didn't. That wasn't very good. The, nowhere in the planet did that work out well. We, the problems we, we face now are scientific, geeky problems. They're economics. They're ecology. There's social engineering. Science. It's all science. And it's, and it's science on top of a world that we have changed in the past 5,000 days. So for the next 5,000 days, and for the 5,000 days after that, the only people who can do something with that world are the people who understand it. And the only people who understand it are you guys. So should you go into politics? Should you try and change your country? Should you try and change the world? Yes, because you are the only people who can. You have to start now. Thank you very much. Vamos a brindarle un muy fuerte aplauso a Ben Hammersley. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Les recordamos que este momento Movistar va a tener conferencia de prensa en el Chill Out para los medios de prensa. Y a las 7 de la tarde nos vemos aquí porque va a venir Daito Manabe a este mismo escenario. Y seguimos aquí en Campus Party.